And now to the UK, which is facing yet another wave of walkouts from workers demanding better pay and working conditions. Yesterday, it was announced ambulance workers and nurses would strike on the same day on February 6th for the very first time. So joining us now from London to discuss the strike action is CBS News senior foreign correspondent Holly Williams. Uh, hey, Holly, you know, people who are kind of keeping track of this but not focused on it will know there have been rotating strikes, but they might not know, you know who all, who, who, who the groups are that have been taking to the picket lines. So who's going on strike? Yeah, good morning, Anne-Marie. The scale of this is um, is pretty extraordinary. Um, tens of thousands of nurses went on strike yesterday, and that industrial action continues today. They'll strike again on the 6th of February, and as you just pointed out, that will coincide with a strike by ambulance workers, and that's the first time that's ever happened, that those two groups have gone on strike on the same day. Obviously, that would not be a good day to, to fall off a ladder. And I'm, hmm. I'm not meaning to, to make light of this mm -hmm. because it's very clear that the groups involved take this very seriously. Uh, back in December was the first time ever that the main nurses union in this country had gone on strike uh, in, in, in over 100 years uh, of history. Uh, nurses have agreed that their strike should not affect emergency care, but something that is being affected is surgeries, uh, many of which have had to be postponed. Separately, teachers plan to strike uh, on seven different days in February and March. That will affect over 23,000 schools uh, and train drivers are also planning industrial action. Now, uh, what's behind this, that'll be no great surprise to you. Inflation in this country is running at over 10 percent. Food and drink prices are rising at the fastest rate this country has seen since 1977. But the government is offering health workers a pay rate rise of just under 5%, mm -hmm. and they say that's not enough. That's not enough, but I want to remind people who may be watching here in the U.S., we're talking about a public health care system, which means that these nurses, the ambulance drivers, they are government workers. Does it look like the government will be able to broker an end to these strikes? Well, as you've just pointed out, actually, in many of these cases, the government isn't really the broker. They're the employer. I mean, this involves teachers in state schools. It involves uh, nurses and ambulance workers who are public employees. The government is saying it simply can't afford the pay rises that are being demanded. It, it simply can't afford uh, to keep salaries on track with inflation. And in fact, the, the health secretary in this country said that if they gave the nurses the pay rise that they're looking for, then patient care would suffer as, as a result because they would have to cut money there. Um, but nurses and teachers uh, and ambulance workers are saying they don't have the money they need to live on. And remember that most people who go into to nursing and, and teaching, I mean, they don't go into it for the money. They don't go into it to get rich. Um, in many cases, it's a, it's a vocation. And so many of the people who are on strike or who are planning to go on strike are saying, you know, we simply don't have enough money to pay our heating bill. Mm. And so what about the public support? I mean, <clears throat> everyone's kind of buckling under inflation. Right. Um, so despite the fact that um, many people here are going to experience disruptions because of this industrial action, they're going to have their surgery postponed. Um, they may not be able to get an ambulance when they need one. Their child may not have a teacher uh, for, for several days. There are actually quite high levels of public support for the action. So um, I've looked at a couple of different polls. They put support for the nurses' strike at around 60 percent, a little bit lower for teachers um, at between 40 and 50 percent, and lower still for railway workers um, at around 40% or, or even less. That's perhaps because historically railway workers in this country have gone on strike a lot. I think what's interesting is the enormous sympathy there is for nurses who are going on strike. Mm. I think that's probably because it's, it's very rare for them to do so. And the public perception is that they are genuinely really struggling. Mm, particularly after the pandemic. We all know what they went through. Holly, thank you very much. Thank you.